Welcome to labmins.com in our lab video series in Cisco IS 1.2. You can find a complete list of our IS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. If you remember, prior to IS 1.2, each IS node, especially the policy service node, requires a unique certificate, and the certificate common name has to also match the node FQDN itself, otherwise the certificate won't install because IS won't let you. And this is because the node uses the common name on the certificate to replace the variable in the redirect URL for users, whether it's for the guest login, supplicant provisioning, or the posture agent download. Now that has changed in ICE 1.2, so instead of the ICE using the common name, ICE refers to its host name and the domain name and use them in the redirect URL. So it no longer needs the common name to match the FQDN, which allows us to use a single wildcard certificate for our nodes. In this video, we will install the wildcard certificate and uses it to build a two-node deployment. On the lab diagram, we have fresh installs of IS 1.2 for the first node, which is LM IS 1, that we're going to designate as the primary AM, AM being the admin and monitoring at the IPF.102 and VLAN 32. And we also have the second node, LM IS 2, that we installed back in the IS 1.2 installation video that we're going to designate as a secondary AM at the IPF.103 and the same VLAN. We also have a Windows 2008 that's our domain controller and certificate authority server that we're going to use to sign our certificate at the IPF.40. Now as far as the format of a wildcard certificate, you might be used to seeing the wildcard of the asterisk as part of the common name or the subject. But for ICE implementation, Cisco suggests to do this a little differently. But instead of doing that the subject name, we're going to be doing it as a DNS name, as you see right here, as part of the subject alternative name or SAN. And then for the actual subject name, you can pretty much use any arbitrary name that you like. As you can see here, we just happen to choose access.labmates.com. And we just need to make sure that we also have the matching DNS name as part of the SAN as well. And you will see in a second here as we go ahead and create the CSR. Since both of our ICE nodes have been installed, so by default, they're in the standalone mode. So just to prep them for the distributed deployment, what we're going to do is to turn our first, our LM, ICE 1 node into a primary AM. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we have the login page for our ICE 1. So let's go ahead and lock in here. And we will need to go under the administration and deployment. And the problem that we're encountering here is it's telling you that the node is currently a standalone mode. And we must first uh, change the role to primary if you want to register other nodes. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to click on the node. And then right here, the current role is standalone. We're going to make it primary. So click on make primary and then save. And it's just going to take a couple seconds for that to finish. Okay, so the node has been successfully converted to a role primary. So the next thing we're going to do is to import the root certificate. And for us, it's the Windows 2008 root certificate. Although it's not really necessary or it's not mandatory, since we're going to use the same certificate on both of our nodes and they should trust each other by default, this is just more of a prepping for the future client base or certificate authentication. So we'll be trusting the client as well, assuming it will be signed by the same root CA. So if we go on administration and certificates, might as well just take care of that now, which is certificate store. And then we can import and have to browse to the file. As you can see here, we have a LM root CA certificate on our desktop. And it's certainly a self-signed root certificate. And we're just going to point that to LM root CA open. And for the friendly name, we also going to call it LM root CA. And if you plan to do a client-based authentication, can check this box as well or the secure syslog service since it's going to be TLS based session. Okay, so click submit. All right, and here's our root CA certificate install. And the next thing we're going to do is to create a certificate signing request. And the way to do that is under local certificate for add, click on the drop down. And right here, there's an option for generate certificate signing requests. So click on that. And then we need to fill in this information first is for the subject name and we say it's going to have the format as we've shown on the diagram right here so let me copy that to avoid all the typo if i can if not let me just copy this over so cn is equal to access.labmins.com and then you have ouo and then the c for the country and here we have the option that you might not have seen in the previous version of ice which is a subject alternative name or san and you have an option of adding DNS name or IP address. But for what we're trying to do, we need DNS name. And that has to match what we have in the CN, which is access.labminutes.com. And then we need to add one more for our wildcard attributes. 
and that will be star or asterisk dot labminutes.com. Okay, make sure we have no typo. Key length we can leave at 2048, same digest, and then make sure that you check the checkbox for allow wildcard certificates as well. Okay, so click submit, and that's it. The CSR has been generated. If you hop over to the certificate signing request on the menu here, this is the CSR. And then we need to export them to have it signed by our certificate authority server. So we're going to save the file, put it on the desktop, and now let's bring up a notepad. We drag the file and drop it, and these are the content of the file. Next, we need to jump onto our certificate server, which is this host that we are currently on. It's a window-based certificate server. Okay, so we go to local host, and then we need to log in using our admin account. Okay, we'll click on request a certificate. We want to do advanced certificate request, and then we need to copy the base64 of our CSR. And for the template, let's just use the web server. And there you go. So we got our certificate. It's been issued and signed. We're going to download the certificate and it's base64 encoded. So download certificate. Again, we'll save the file and let's call it access.labminutes.com. Put it on the desktop. And now we have our certificate. So we can double click on it right here. Issue 2 access.labminutes.com issue by LM root CA and then when you look at the detail and trying to find a subject alternative name here we have both of our DNS name attribute access.labminutes.com and star.labminutes.com okay now that we have our certificate we need to import it back and the exact option here is under local certificate we drop down we have to bind CA sign certificate since we have the CSR waiting already so we need to browse to the file, choose the certificate file, give it a friendly name. We're also going to call it access.labminutes.com. We want to allow the wildcard certificate, and we plan to use the same certificate for both ePA authentication and HTTPS related transaction. Okay, so submit. Since we specify that we're going to use the certificate for HTTPS, it's going to go through a restart so the next time it comes up it will start using the certificate on our interface or web interface here okay so now we're just going to have to wait for the services to restart okay so the services came back and as you can see the certificate on the server has changed since it's asking us to accept the certificate so right here go ahead and do that and if you look at the certificate more information on the browser view certificate you can see it's changed to the access.labminist.com which is the certificate which is installed all right, so let's go ahead and lock in. And now that we have successfully installed the new certificate, our wildcard certificate on a primary node, what we need to do now is install the same certificate on the secondary node. While we already have the certificate right here on the desktop, but for us to be able to install the certificate on the second node, we also need the private key, which we did not have since we used the ICE to generate the CSR. So what we need to do is to export the certificate and the private key from our primary node. And the way to do that is you go under the certificates. And then we choose the certificate we want to export, click export. And we have two options, whether it's just to export certificate only or certificate with the private key, which is what we want. We're going to give it the password for encryption. Just going to make it Cisco 123, click export. We'll save the file and see it's a zip file and we'll save that on the desktop. Close that and let's extract that also onto the desktop so you can see it's .pem and .pvk. Okay, so here we have both a file certificate and private key. Now we can move over to our LM ICE2, which we're going to make it become a secondary AM. So here .103, make sure this session is good and then go ahead and lock in to the web interface. And now to import the certificate and the private key, again, we go under administrations and certificates. And then under local certificates, drop down, and this time we're gonna import local server certificate. 
And you can see here it's asking us for both certificate and private key. So let's choose one at the time, starting off with our certificate.pem and then private key, which is same file name with dot pvk, password, Cisco123, friendly name, let's call it access.labminutes.com. Okay, same thing, allow wildcard certificate, and we're going to use that for both EAP and HTTPS authentication. Click OK, submit, and same thing here, it's going to go through a service restart, and we're just going to have to wait for the services to come back before we proceed with the node registration to build the distributed deployment. Okay, so the services on the second node came back, and let's try to lock back in. But first, let's double check on our certificate. So view certificate right there, access.labmins.com. And again, on the subject alternative name, we've got our wildcard attributes in there. Okay, so now that we have the same wildcard certificate installed on both nodes, we can go ahead and do our node registration. So under administration deployment, right here, there's a registered button. So we click on registered and ICE node. We have to give it host uh, FQDN. So make sure you have the DNSA record for both of the nodes. So for us it's lm-ice2.labmits.com. For username is admin and then our password. Click next. And if the connection and negotiation is successful, you will see right here as far as what role you want the nodes to be in. Since we already have a primary, this node is set up to be a secondary for the administration as well as the monitoring. Although you can switch the node to take over the primary monitoring role or persona. And we're going to make this node a policy service as well. So we'll leave everything at default and then we'll click submit. Since this process might take a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and we'll come back once it's completed. Okay, so after 15 minutes or so, the node has successfully registered. As you can see with the node status, with the green uh, checkbox right here, it's like connected and the node's become a secondary AM. Let's go back to our LM ICE2 and see how the web interface has changed now that it has become a secondary node. So you can see the first thing you notice here that you have less option with the menu in the top as you compare to the primary. So the policy option is no longer there. And even if when you drop down the administration menu, there's way much uh, less option here as well. Okay, and this is because that from this point on, all the changes that needs to be made should be done on the primary node itself and not the secondary. With the only exception would be when the primary node fails, but actually even that you still wouldn't be able to make changes to the sec on a secondary node unless you promote the secondary node to take over the primary role. And at that point, you will get all the menus back and then you'll be able to start making changes again. Okay, so at this point, we have successfully built a two node deployment. And that wraps up our video on ICE 1.2 distributed deployment with wildcard certificate. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.